Hey guys, my name is Tom, and in this video I'm going to show you several examples of reducing fractions. And we'll take a look at some pictures to go with the process, so we can truly understand what actually it means to reduce a fraction. So let's begin by some, with something simple. Say we are asked to reduce something such as 2 over 4. So this is what we can do. We can take the 2 and write it as 2 times 1, and we can take the 4 and write that as 2 times 2. And by taking a step, what we observe is now that the 2's can be cancelled. So I'll do that with a different color. And all that remains is 1 over 2. Okay, so we have reduced the fraction from 2 out of 4 to 1 out of 2. But what it means, of course, in terms of a picture is the following. And this has a very interesting interpretation. So let's take it as follows. 1, 2, 3, 4... So here we have a rectangle, and we can divide the rectangle into four equal pieces. Here we are, and two out of, of course, out of those are these here, say. Okay, so that's our two out of four. And by taking the step of reducing, what we have done is imagine this. We have the same rectangle as before, but the difference is it's taking, instead of taking 2 out of 4, we are now taking, more conveniently, 1 out of 2. See? That's what it means to reduce a fraction in terms of a picture. Instead of dividing this into 4 equal pieces and taking 2 of those pieces, we are dividing this into 2 pieces and taking only 1 of those pieces. Okay? Let's take a look at another example. How about we do 3 out of 8? Well, no. How about we do 3 out of 9? There we are. So, say we have 3 out of 9. Okay. And we are going to reduce this. So, we write the top as 3 times 1, in the bottom as 3 times 3. And the first thing to observe is that the 3's cancel very nicely, and all that remains is 1 out of 3. And now let's take a look at a pictorial representation of this concept to be sure we truly understand what we are doing. So what are we doing? Well, as before, we can use either a rectangle or we can use a pie, it doesn't matter. You can use a little line segment. So in this one I will use Another rectangle, I like them, they're easy to visualize. Okay, so this one will be divided into, say, nine equal pieces at first. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now let's slice the rectangle vertically into nine equal pieces, as I am doing right now. And to take three out of the nine means to take these, say. And you can shade them consecutively or not. There we are, there is our 3 out of 9. And by reducing, what we are saying instead is, you can simply think of it as this. 1, 2, 3, draw a rectangle of exactly the same size, but divide this one into 3 equal pieces, and one of those pieces is the same size, you see? So 1 out of 3 is the same as 3 out of 9. 1 out of 2 pieces is the same as 2 out of 4 pieces. And we've reduced the fraction. So really to reduce means to you know, simplify things as much as possible, meaning we want as few pieces as possible in the fraction. We don't want to deal with 9 pieces. When it's possible instead to deal with 3, we don't want to deal with 4 pieces when instead it's possible to deal with two pieces. Okay. So th these are the basics of reducing fractions and this concept carries over to more complex fractions but these are really the fundamentals both algebraically and at the same time pictorially. Okay. Um, let's see, what else can we do here? Let's take a look. What's very useful also is the following. Sometimes the fraction is not 
so easy to handle as these, which means what you need is a more purely mathematical approach. Okay, so say you have something such as 24 out of 84. Okay. And the fractions are small, we can do it both algebraically and then we can draw pictures to confirm we truly understand, but then when the numbers are big in the denominator and the numerator, the picture-based approach may be a little unwieldy. So instead, we take a more traditional approach which looks like, which looks like the following. It's always helpful to know how to find the factors of two numbers, so we will do a factor tree for 24, and then we will do a factor tree for 84, and these will allow us to remove all the common factors, okay? So let's take a look. What we have is 24, it can be written as 2 times 12, 12 can be written as 4 times 3, and then this 4 can be expressed as 2 times 2. So what this allows us to do is the following. We can take the number 24 and we can rewrite it simply as that 2 times that 2 times that 2 times that 3. There we are. So with this in place, let's take a look at the 84. That one is a little more complicated because it's bigger. So we have 2 and now the 84 can be written as <clears throat> 42. Okay, then 42 can be written as 6 times 7, like this, and the 6 can be written as 2 times 3. Okay, so this is the factor tree for 84. Let's take a look at what we have. Copy the numbers straight down, so we have 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. Here we are. So by factoring the numbers, we see what the common factors are very readily. And now we can simply cross things off one by one by one. Cross, cross, cross off, cross off. Cross off the three and the three. And you can tell from this calculation all that remains is two over seven. You see? So once again, when you deal with something like 2484, if you were to represent that using a rectangle, you might draw something like this. First you would have to divide this into 84 equal pieces and then shade 24 of them. That's hard. However, if you divide it into 7 equal pieces, it shows that all you have to do is shade two of them. And the result is the same as 24 out of 84, even though we have not shown the 24 out of 84 because it would have been just too unwieldy to show on a piece of paper. So these are the fundamentals of reducing fractions, both using pictures, using factor trees, and then by canceling common factors, we see how simple things can be made. So that is it. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to smile always. Have a great day.